Last time on One vs 100, we saw Ricky almost make it all the way, only to fall agonizingly short of the finish line. In the end, only one person stood between Ricky and winning thousands, and that one was Ubol. She made a good start, and now she's back this week to try and finish the job. Can she do it? We're about to find out. Welcome to One vs 100. Saturday night, join us in the National Lottery 1 vs 100 arena as we play the most competitive show on TV with your host, Ben Shepherd. Good evening and welcome to 1 vs 100, the show where one contestant takes on 100 opponents. Yuval here is our contestant from the last show. She has 47 opponents left to beat in the 100. So far, she has £4,500 in the bank. She's used one of her three dodges, but she does still have her double. There's plenty of opportunity for her to win big. All you've got to do, Yuval, is take out those remaining 47 opponents. It's not going to be easy, but if you carry on getting the questions right, you could be going home with a massive £148,500. But if you get just one question wrong, We'll be going home with no money whatsoever, and someone else from the 100 will take your place. Yeah. Incidentally, amongst the 47 remaining members of the 100, there are six students. There's a police officer, a personal trainer, and someone who is a retired paramedic and part-time butcher, which is quite a change of career. <laughs> OK. Digital viewers, you can play at home if you press your red button now, so good luck to you. You bowl, you ready? Yep. The remaining 47 members of the 100, are you ready to play? Let's play one versus 100. So for each question, you get a choice of two categories. So let's have a look which two we're going to kick off with. Art or pop music? I think I'd go for art, please. What was the first name of the English painter Constable? A. James. B. John. Or C. Joseph. Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds to register your answers, starting now. So, any ideas? Um, I think it's John. B. You think it's John? Yeah. What makes you think that? Well, it sounds familiar, John Constable. Sounds familiar? Yeah. OK. Yes. B, please, John. Please reveal, is the answer B, John? Yes, well done. <laughs> Another one under your belt. Let's see how many of the remaining members got that wrong. We want to see as much red as possible. Only four of them got it wrong. Your new total is £8,500. It's now you versus 43. <laughs> Let's have a look at your next two categories. Dance or travel? Oh, I'd go for dance. Please. OK, we're going to have a dance question, please. Which ballet tells the story of Odette, who has been placed under a spell by a wicked magician? A. Capalia, B, The Nutcracker, or C, Swan Lake? I'm quite sure it's Swan Lake. You've also got your double, remember? I use it then, in that case, because I'm quite sure it's Swan Lake. OK. So we think it's Swan Lake, C. And we'd also like to employ the double. To get this wrong, it's all over. Which ballet tells the story of a debt who has been placed under a spell by a wicked magician? Is the answer C, Swan Lake? Yes, well done. <laughs> so this is important now mm -hmm. because you've played your double. For every person that goes out, you will get £2,000 mm -hmm. into your prize fund. So let's find out. 
19 got it wrong. That's £19,000. We'll double. £38,000. Your total is now £46,500. It's you versus 24. That is a massive double. Adding £38,000 into wow. the prize funds. Wow. A brave guess and a very worthwhile play using your double. You must be delighted. Yep. Let's see what our next two categories are going to be. Science or bonus dodge. So, you've knocked out over 75 of your opponents. This means you get a chance, as you can see, to earn a bonus dodge. If you go for the bonus dodge question and you get it wrong, you'll be out. And one of these guys, the remaining members of the 100, will take your place. I, I go for we'll science. Go for science? Yeah, please. Ignore the bonus dodge. OK, we're going to ignore the bonus dodge. Which of these was a big-selling book of science experiments? A. How to carbonise your guinea pig. B. How to fossilise your hamster. Or C. How to mummify your gerbil. So, do you recognise the name of the book? Absolutely no idea. OK. <laughs> I think I have to play the dodge on this one. You're going to please. have to dodge yeah. this one. We're going to halve your prize fund. Mm -hmm. You got any pets? No. No. I don't think the person mm. who wrote this book should have any pets either. <laughs> Which one would you have, have a stab no at? No idea. I, I will go for the C when it sounds sensible. <laughs> <laughs> Was that C? Yeah, I go for that. One. Okay. Let's find out. Was the answer the very sensible C, how to mummify your gerbil? No, it wasn't. Oh, Boss Elijah Hamster, great dodge, well done. <laughs> so you turned down the chance of the bonus dodge and I then know. had to use the dodge immediately. Yeah. But it was a tricky question. Maybe some of these guys have got it wrong too. <laughs> Seven of them got it wrong, which means your total after the dodge stands at £23,250. It's now you versus 17. <laughs> OK, let's have a look at your next two categories. Events of 2009 or literature? I go for literature, please. We'll take literature, please. By what nickname is the literary character Jack Dawkins better known? A. The Artful Dodger. B. The Catcher in the Rye. Or C. The Scarlet Pimpernel. Remaining members of the 100, you have six seconds in counting. Jack Dawkins. I think he's in Oliver Twist. OK. And I think... He... I think it's A. The Artful Doctor. OK. By what nickname is the literary character Jack Dawkins better known? Is the answer A, The Artful Dodger? Yes! Let's find out how many of the 100 that are remaining got it wrong. There's only one. Oh. Frustrating. It's still a thousand pounds. Your new total stands at twenty-four thousand two hundred and fifty pounds. It's now you versus sixteen. <laughs> Let's have a look at your next two categories. Geography or the human body? I go for geography, please. We'll have a geography question. Which of these great rivers flows northwards? A. Mississippi. B. Nile. Or C. Yangtze. Oh, this is a bad question. Any of them feel like they might flow up? <laughs> no idea. I think this is the end. 
Well, you've got one dodge left. I have to use the dodge. We're going to use our last yeah. dodge? OK, we're going to employ our last dodge, please. We halve the money. So, of those three... Yeah, I go for the Yangtze. You go for the Yangtze? C. Was it a good use of your last dodge, Yubo? Let's find out. Is the answer C, Yangtze? Nile. Well done. Well done indeed. Fantastic. <laughs> it gets tough when we get down and when you just don't know, you just don't know. That's right, yeah. Okay, so that's why you've got your dodges. You've used them very well indeed. You're still in the game. We need to find out how many of the 100 that are left mm. got it wrong. <laughs> Seven got it wrong. The total after the dodge is 12,125. <laughs> It's now you versus nine. <laughs> Only nine left. <laughs> so let's have a look at your next two categories. Yeah. Entertainment or myths and legends? I go for myths and legends. Myths and legends? We'll have that, please. In Arthurian legend, which knight returned Excalibur to the lake after Arthur's death? Was it A, Sir Bedivere, B, Sir Galahad, or C, Sir Percival? You've got £12,125. We're out of dodges. You have to give me the answer. It's between... It's between Sir Galahad and Sir Percival, but I don't know which one. Why not Bedivere? I never heard of him. <laughs> so he can't have done it? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Bedivere, Sir Galahad or Sir Percival? I go for Sir Galahad. Who returned Excalibur to the lake after Arthur's death is B, Sir Galahad. If you're wrong, having fought so well, you're, bold, you're going home with nothing. Is the answer B, Sir Galahad? Oh! oh. The so one that I never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> Just goes to show. Oh, okay. Just because you haven't heard of him doesn't mean you know this. Well, I enjoy, I enjoy the game. Well, we've enjoyed yeah. having you. You've played an extraordinary game. Thank you very much for Thank playing. Thank you very much. You bowled, everybody. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. <laughs> so, you bowled beat so many people, but just at the final hurdle, she falls and she's going home with absolutely nothing. So, we need to find out how many people were knocked out by that question who were remaining in the 100. Let's see. <laughs> There they are. Seven got it wrong. That means there's only two left, including our copper. Hello, hello. <laughs> so, which of you two will be chosen to be the new one to take on the 100? Let's find out who it is. The next one to challenge the 100 is Gordon Mackay. Gordon is a police officer for Murray. If he wins, he says he'll spend the money on a family treat. So can Gordon detect a weakness in the 100 or will taking them on prove to be an arresting experience? Will our copper go home with the gold? We're about to find out. Gordon, everybody! How are you doing, Gordon? Lovely to meet you. So you fought your way all the way through to the final two yep. and you found yourself on the spot. I uh have, -huh, yep. Are you pleased to be here? Very much so, yeah. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Gordon. You're married? I'm married to Shona. I've got two daughters, Hannah, who's nine, and Megan, who's five. What do they think about Dad being on the show tonight? I think they'll be very excited, especially if I do win something. And I'm sure they'll be wanting a pony. A pony? 
That's what they're after? Well, probably. We better win you a lot of money. Mm. Gordon, you ready to play? I'm um, indeed, yes. 100, you ready to play? <coughs> yes! OK. Let's play one versus 100. <laughs> So you've battled your way through, you know what happens now. You get two categories to choose from for your first question, so let's see which ones they are. <laughs> celebrities or fictional characters? I think I'll go for celebrities. Celebrities more your bag? <sighs> oh, we'll, we'll see in a minute or two. OK. <laughs> let's have a celebrities question, please. Which TV presenter hit the headlines in 2008 over his dissatisfaction with a brand of underwear? A, Jeremy Clarkson, B, John Humphreys, or C, Jeremy Paxman. Members of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. I'm pretty sure to see Jeremy Paxman. What makes you say that? Because I think it's the right answer. <laughs> well, as in you're dissatisfied with your pants too, is that what you mean? There has been occasions. We'd like to see, please, Jeremy Paxman. Was it Jeremy Paxman who was dissatisfied with his underwear in 2008? Yes, well done. <laughs> Gordon, you know your pants. Thank you. It's important. Let's find out how many of the 100 didn't. 29 of them didn't know. That's £29,000. It's a great start. It's you versus 71. <laughs> you've got your three dodges and you've got your double. Because you've got some money in the bank now, you can use any of those if you need to. Let's have a look at your next two categories. Here they are. Food and drink or television? I think I'll go for television, please. Let's have television, please. In the animated series The Simpsons, what are the names of Marge's sisters? A, Selma and Patty. B, Thelma and Marcy. Or C, Velma and Judy. <laughs> Fan of The Simpsons? Mm-hmm. So you know the answer to this one? Hopefully. A. Selma and Patty? Yes. You've got 29,000 pounds. You've still got your three dodges and your double. Go for my double. You'd like to employ your double? Yeah. And do you think the answer is? A. A. Selma and Patty. Is the answer A. Selma and Patty? Yes, it is. <laughs> So we employed the double for that one. We want as many of them to go out as possible so we can rake in some serious cash. Let's find out who got that wrong. Will you please reveal the reds? 15 got it wrong. £15,000, which we doubled for £30,000. Your new total stands at £59,000. It's you versus 56. <laughs> Still got a comic book journalist, a writer, and a professional boxer to beat. So keep your eyes open. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at your next two categories. They are cinema or words and language, Gordon. Either of those strike your fancy? Uh, cinema. You prefer cinema? Yeah. Do you go to cinema a lot? Sometimes, yeah. OK. Who played the washed-up title character in the hit film The Wrestler? A. Dennis Hopper, B. Mickey Rourke, or C. Bruce Willis? Go to the cinema, have you been recently? Uh, children's films. Children's, children's films. Children's films, let's go there. OK. Perhaps not The Wrestler, you've not seen this one? Not yet, no. But you know of it? I do, yes. And do you know the answer? The answer would be B. Mickey Rourke. 
Feeling very confident with this one. We're going to go with B, Mickey Rourke. Still got three dodges you could have used. You've chosen not to. There's 59,000 pounds at stake. Was it Mickey Rourke who played the wrestler? Is the answer B? Yes, well done. <laughs> so lovely when you know the answer. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> OK, you were very confident with that one. What we need to find out is how confident the remaining 56 were. Just two of them got it wrong. £2,000, your new total. It's a cracking £61,000. Gordon, it's you versus 54. <laughs> Staying very calm at the moment, Gordon, I have to say. Trying to, trying to. Maintaining that, that steeliness which you need. Next two categories, please. Astrology or sport? Sport. Let's have a look at sport, please. Which of these is not the nickname of a famous Muhammad Ali boxing fight? A, the fracas in Caracas. B, the rumble in the jungle. Or C, the thriller in Manila. There's a professional boxer up there who I reckon would know this answer. This will be one left anyway. How about you? Uh, the answer would be A. Let's go straight for it. Confident. OK, we think the answer is A, the fracas in Caracas. So far, Gordon has beaten 46 of his opponents and has £61,000 in the bank. However, if he eliminates the remaining 54, could be taking home £165,000. Can he do it? We're going to find out after we go live to the National Lottery HQ for the first of tonight's lottery draws, which are Thunderball and Dream Number. I'm going to hand you over to the gorgeous Jenny Faulkner. We are live and direct from National Lottery HQ on this Saturday, the 25th of April, with a lotto rollover and, as Ben just said, the gorgeous Jenny Falconer. Thank you very much, Alan. Good evening and welcome to Saturday's National Lottery Draw. So, Jenny, tomorrow, the big day, the London Marathon. Are you all limbered up and ready to run the 26.2 miles and win in record time, I hope? <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. I'm <laughs> as ready as I'll ever be, I've got to be honest. If you do see me staggering, puffing and panting around the course, please, please give me a wave and cheer me on. My runner number is 28. 204. 28204. We'll all be cheering you on, Jenny. Don't worry about a thing. So, talking of numbers, shall we get to it and create some brand new weekend winners? What do you think? Yeah, take my mind off the marathon, please. <laughs> Stop what you're doing as we play the first live draw of the night, which is as if you needed a reminder Thunderbolt. To make sure everything runs smoothly this evening is Drawmaster Martin McClure and independent adjudicator Adam Byer. Nice to see you both. OK, Alan, the scene's set down here. Take it away. Let's find out who's going to be celebrating. Martin, release the balls, please. Tonight, we are using Excalibur and set balls number five. Chosen for us at random earlier today by Manuel Miguez from Donisville. Over 112,000 tickets won a prize on Wednesday. Eight of them matched with the five main numbers to win five grand each. But, talking of money, there is a Thunderball jackpot of £250,000 still unclaimed in the Newcastle-upon-Tyne area from the draw on Wednesday the 8th of April. Visit BBC Online for more details, guys. Jenny? Yeah, check your tickets right then. Drawmaster Martin, are we all ready? Can we get the thumbs up? All set to go. Excellent. Are you about to become a quarter of a million pounds richer? Let's find out. Start the draw! Here we go then, with the first of tonight's live draws. And there's the first number, 24. And next, this Saturday night, which is it to be? There's the answer, look, up pops number five. And the third to be drawn this weekend is... That one there, 14. Two more needed from this, our first machine. Here is the first of them. And that is number three. And the final ball on this machine, before we do anything else, is there, number 23. OK, then, Martin, sidle over to the second machine now, if you would. Start that one up, please, and release the 14 red Thunderballs. Now, can I just remind you, it depends on how many you've matched with so far, but matching with one of these little beauties as well, 
could be good news. Jenny. Thank you for reminding us, Alan. All you need to do to start winning on this game is match one ball from the first machine plus the thunderbolt. The more you match, the more you win. And take note, this is your best chance of winning £250,000 on any national lottery game. We really hope that this next number is on your ticket. Here we go. Start the draw. And thanks for the note, Jenny. Good luck from me. And there it is. Up pops number one. So, here are tonight's Thunderbolt numbers again, this time in ascending order. 3, 5, 14, 23, and number 24, the Thunderbolt number 1. Jenny. OK, then, the top prize in this next game is half a million pounds, so let's play it. Let's play dream number. And by playing Dream Number, you're helping to fund many of the venues that will be hosting events at the London 2012 Olympic Games and Paralympic Games. So, Drawmaster, are we good to go? Yes, certainly are. Excellent. OK, very best of luck to you all. Start that draw. Tonight, we're using Aventurine and Cerebrals number two, chosen by Mr Minkias. And the news from Wednesday's Dream Number draw is that over 37,000 tickets won a prize. Three lucky tickets match with the first five numbers in sequence to win five grand each. If some of that cash came your way, congratulations from all of us here at Lottery HQ. Back to tonight and live on BBC One. It's time for this weekend's Dream Number Draw. First up tonight is... a three. Now, if you match with that number, you're definitely in the game tonight. Good news. Two pounds is yours. And the next one. Up comes that one there, a nine. If you match with those first two numbers in that order, your prize money now stands at a tenner. There's a seven. Don't forget in this game, you have a one in ten chance of winning a prize. Next up is a six. If you match correctly with the four numbers drawn so far, you've won 500 seconds. And the next one. That's a four. You must match with these numbers in sequence and with no breaks in the chain, please. Next is a four. One more number to come, guys. Which is it going to be? The answer is a two. So tonight's National Lottery dream number is three, nine, seven, six, four, four, two. Miss Falcon. OK, that's it for now. We will be back shortly for the big lotto rollover draw. But first, it's back to Ben and Gordon in one versus 100. And don't forget, you can play along with the contestants by just pressing the red button on your remote. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Before the lottery, Gordon here knocked out 46 of his opponents so far. He has £61,000 in the bank. If he has the right answer to this question, he could be on course to take home £165,000. If he's wrong, though, he'll leave with nothing. Question was, which of these is not the nickname of a famous Muhammad Ali boxing fight? A, the fracas in Caracas. B, the rumble in the jungle. Or C, the thriller in Manila. We've gone for A, the fracas in Caracas. All of your money is riding on this answer. Is the answer the fracas in Caracas? Yes, well done. <laughs> Almost got a smile out of you then, Gordon. Nearly, nearly. You obviously know you're boxing. How many of the remaining members didn't? Seven of them got it wrong. Your new total is £68,000. It's you versus 47. Let's have a look at the next two categories, please. Events of 2009 or fashion? Let's go fashion. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> That's not fair, Gordon. I'm offended yeah. for you. Thank you. It's a very fashionable... What is that colour? Plum? Ah, OK. Yeah. <laughs> We'll have fashion, please. <laughs> On which part of the body is a fascinator usually worn? A, chest, B, hand, or C, head? <laughs> have you ever worn a fascinator? Not in public. No? <laughs> Do you know what a fascinator is? It's a type of headwear. 
How confident are you? Fair way. Okay. Yeah, we'll go for C. We'll go for C, please, head. It's a fascinator usually worn on C, the head. Well done. All you who laughed at him choosing fashion. Yeah. 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 We know our fascinators up here. <laughs> Let's find out if the remaining members of the 100 knew that a fascinator is worn on the head. <laughs> 10 got it wrong. That's another £10,000, Gordon. Your new total is £78,000. It's you versus 37. <laughs> Surely. Another ten gone. We're looking good. Let's have a look at your next two categories. Entertainment or the human body? Human body, please. What does a person suffering from marderosis lose? A. Eyelashes. B. Teeth. Or C. Toenails. What does a person suffering from madarosis lose? Eyelashes, teeth, or toenails? It's a dodge question, this one. No ideas? Nope. Ever heard of it? Nope. Think nope. you can work it out? Nope. Man, a few words, aren't you, Gordon? Indeed. <laughs> OK, we'd like to employ our first dodge here, please. So we halve your prize fund from 78 goes down to £39,000. So which one do you think it might be? I would go C. Potentially toenails. Yeah. Is C the correct answer? It's eyelashes. Well done. Well done indeed. Madarosis is the loss of eyelashes. We're through. How many of the 100 that are still in are we going to lose now? Okay, 14 got it wrong. Your total after the dodge stands at 39,000. It's now you versus 23. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look at your next two categories. Commerce and industry or bonus dodge. So you've knocked out over 75 of your opponents, you get a chance to earn an extra dodge. If you get the question wrong, then you're out. One of those remaining members of the 100 will take your place. I'll go for the bonus dodge. The bonus dodge question is an audio question, so let's have a listen to this. But you don't really care for music, do ya? When it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah. Which 60s icon wrote that charts topping hit? A. Leonard Cohen, B. Donovan, or C. Bob Dylan? recognise the song? I'm pretty sure I know who, who the uh, icon was that wrote it. Who do you think it was? A. Leonard Cohen. You found it Leonard Cohen? It's not cheery enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I get that. I understand that. <laughs> so we think it's Leonard Cohen, we're going to go for it? Yes. If this is right, you get that extra dodge. If it's wrong, it's all over. Is the answer A, Leonard Cohen? Yes! <laughs> Smile's getting bigger. It was, of course, Hallelujah by Alexandra Burke. That was the version we just listened to. You got your bonus dodge. You're through. Question is, how many of them got it wrong? 
five got it wrong. They're playing very tough tonight. That's £5,000. Your total goes up to £44,000. It's now you versus 18. <laughs> Let's see if we can get your next two categories. Films or people and places? Go for films, please. Films? Yeah. Films, please. What was the first film to win the Best Animated Picture Oscar? A, A Bug's Life. B, Shrek. Or C, Toy Story. Kids films. You said you love kids films. Mm -hmm. That's what you watch. I'm assuming you know all of those three. Yes, I've seen them all. Do you know which one no. was the first? No. Could you hazard a guess? I could, but I might be wrong. So I think I'll, I'll go for a, a dodge. A OK, we're going to dodge this one, please. So we're half the money. So we've dodged it. Which one did you think it might be? I'll go for it. Toy Story. OK. So, are you right to dodge? Is the answer C, Toy Story? It was Shrek. It was Shrek. <laughs> Goodness me, Gordon, Gordon, Gordon. <laughs> wow. So Shrek was the first year that they had a best animated feature category. Indeed, I think Toy Story was the first film to come out. OK, we need to see lots of red now. Seventeen got it wrong. Your total after the dodge is £22,000. Gordon, it's now you versus one. I have to say, Lynn, you look very excited that you had that right. Uh, more surprised than excited. <laughs> was it a huge guess? It was, because I don't know why I pressed that button. <laughs> <laughs> I was going for something else. This might not be as hard as we thought. <laughs> well, she's still there. She's also done well to get there. <laughs> Good luck to you, Lynn. Thank There's you. only two of you left in. <clears throat> Gordon, you're in a very, very strong position. You've still got two dodges, and only Lynn stands between you and over £70,000. Shall we get your next two categories? Go for it. Two categories, please. Actors and actresses or astronomy? Astronomy. Straight into astronomy? Yeah. Which Asian country launched its first unmanned moon mission in October 2008? A, India. B, Japan. Or C, South Korea. Lynn, you have six seconds and counting. <laughs> Lynn's giving me her answer. How about you? Uh, I think I'll use a dodge. You don't know the answer to this one? I've got an idea what I think it is, but I'll go for my dodge. Which one do you think it is? India. We're going to play a dodge on this one, please. You think that the answer could be India, but you're just not sure. OK. We'll take A. India, please. So far, Gordon has beaten 99 of his opponents and has £11,000 in the bank. There is only Lynn between him and winning £62,000. Can he do it? Or will Lynn get the better of him? We're going to find out after we go live to the National Lottery HQ for tonight's big lotto draw. They're all yours, Jenny. Oh, yes, they are. Thank you, Ben, and well
welcome back to Saturday's National Lottery Draws. Now, this evening's draw team, alongside an independent adjudicator, are busy preparing for the 227th Lotto Rollover Draw, which will take place in just a moment. And for all the latest news, including today's daily play results, visit BBC Online or simply press the red button. There'll be a lottery update with all of tonight's draw results right here on BBC One. It's at around half past ten tonight, straight after the main news. Thank you, you are correct, Alan. <laughs> OK, let's not wait a moment longer. Get straight to the action. It's time to play Lotto. Got a good feeling about this jackpot. Uh -huh. How much is in the rollover? Jenny, tonight's rollover jackpot is an estimated £7.6 million. Pounds. See, that kind of cash would certainly have you running all oh. the way to Mexico because the marathon. Hang on, hang on. Do can I, I just take it away? Can I just do my weekend yeah, thing? Do it. OK, Martin, let's release those rollover balls. Thanks to Manuel from Donis Hill, we're using Amethyst and Cedibles too. According to the draw team, over 272,000 tickets won a prize on Wednesday. Two of them matched with five plus the bonus to win over 429 grand each. But as nobody matched all six main numbers drawn midweek, we have another Saturday night rollover on our hands. Whoopee! And it's tonight very, very is a big OK, John Master Martin, are we ready to change someone's life forever? Yes, Jenny, we are. OK, then. You could be about to become rich beyond your wildest dreams. Good luck. Start that draw. Yes. Whoopee! First one tonight is right there, number 39. Last draw on Tuller Wednesday night, as you'll know, if it's one of your favourites. 178th time as a main ball. Next out is number 41. 140th time as a lotto main ball. Last with us half a dozen Wednesdays back. And the third one this Saturday night looks a bit like that. Number 7. Last draw on all of 11 weekends back. That 197th lotto appearance. And the next one. Out comes... That one there, number 17, last joined us four weekends back. 194th time now. That one's graced us with its presence. And the fifth one is right there, number 14. 194th lotto appearance for that one. Last with us four Wednesdays back. And the sixth one, the one that could make you very rich, is right there, number 49, top of the shot. Joined us last weekend as well, 173rd time as a lotto main ball. The bonus tonight is number 29. So, Millionaire's Row this weekend looks like this in ascending order. Seven. 14, 17, 39, 41, and 49. The bonus, 29. Jenny. OK, that's all from us for tonight. Next week, Mylene Class will be your host on Wednesday for the midweek draws at 10.35, and we'll be back here next Saturday during One Versus 100. Jenny, the very best of luck with the marathon tomorrow. Remember, pace yourself. That's the answer, pace I yourself. I will, will do, Alan. There'll be live coverage of the London Marathon on BBC One tomorrow. We'll see you soon. Now back to Ben. Bye-bye. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Before the lottery, you saw Gordon smash out 99 of his opponents. He has £11,000 in the bank. And just Lynn stands between him and £62,000. He's dodged this question, but he still has one up his sleeve, so he's in a very strong position indeed. So, the question that you dodged, which Asian country launched its first unmanned moon mission in October 2008? A, India, B, Japan, C, South Korea. Felt like it was India, didn't want to take the risk, we've dodged it. Is the answer A, India? Yes. You should have gone with it. But hey, you've still got a dodge left. Never mind, yep. And it comes down to Lynn now. If Lynn's right, she's cleverly taken away one of your dodges mm -hmm. and weakened you. If she's wrong, you're going to take home £62,000. Please reveal whether Lynn got that question wrong. No, she didn't. She was right. The total after that dodge is £11,000. It is still you versus one. Yeah. You need the answer to that one? Yes, I did. No problems? No problems. No guessing? No, no. Would you have rather we'd gone for, was it films? No, I probably would have been all right on films as well. <laughs> <laughs> 
she's good. She's got the fighting talk, hasn't she? She does. Is that, is that the boxer? <laughs> she is the professional boxer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on. You've still got a dodge in your back pocket. £11,000 in the bank. You could be taken home if you beat Lynn. £62,000. Let's get your next two categories. Britain or pop music? So it's not just about you now. Yeah. It's what to think about Lynn too. I think we'll go for Britain. Britain? Britain. Why is that? I think she's young enough to know her pop music. <laughs> is he trying to flatter you into losing? <laughs> it's a good tactic. We'll take Britain, please. What is the maximum amount of 50 pence pieces that is legal tender? A, 10 pounds, B, 20 pounds, or C, 30 pounds? Lynn, as the only remaining member of the 100, you have six seconds and counting. She's still not giving anything away. She's given me her answer, though. The question is, do you know the answer? No, there's the answer there. Um, no idea? No, I'll have to use my, my final dodge. We're going to use our final dodge, please. We halve that prize fund, £5,500. You've dodged this question, but which of those would you go for? What do you think? B. You think it'd be £20? I think so. Any reason? £10 is, isn't a great deal, £30 is quite a lot of loose change, so, so I'm going for B. OK, we're going to go for B, £20. What is the maximum amount of 50 pence pieces that is legal tender? Is B the right answer? what it comes down to. If Lynn has the wrong answer, you'll be taking home £55,500 to your wife and your two girls. If Lynn got that right, we go again. For £55,500, did Lynn get that answer wrong? She did! Goodness me. When you came here today, could you ever imagine that one, you'd get up there and two, you'd be going home with so much chance. money? Never thought that in a million. How does it feel? It's still to hit me yet. But no, I'm, uh... I can't wait to see what it's like when it does. I know. It's <laughs> just, uh, just still sinking in. Still sinking in. You've been a great, great competitor. Played it very cool throughout. You managed to take Lynn down at the last. But you did a brilliant job, and we're delighted you're going home with so much money. Well done. Thank you very much. Gordon, everybody. <laughs> so Gordon is leaving with a fantastic £55,500 after a very tough battle with Lynn. That should certainly pay not only for a pony for the girls, but a stable to put it in as well. Join us next time, and we'll choose a brand new one to take on the 100. Maybe someone else will go home with a fortune. Who knows? See you then. Good night. Yeah.